This week with the bus bums, I mill up Ash Slabs with a makeshift router sled for a workbench and a desk. The problems that I endure are soon to be very apparent. Spent like the last half hour routing, and then my bit started walking out on me and cut really deep trenches there. Ugh. Angry face. I'm gonna call it a day because that's just frustrating. Ugh. All right. So yeah, so pretty much that's the only hunk of wood that I have. Well, I guess I'm gonna have to use, the, I guess the other side's gonna have to be the top because I, I can't I can't take another eighth of an inch off the whole thing. I mean, just, just the noise alone and the neighbors, I don't wanna put them through that. I mean, I've gotta do it another six more times, so. I might as well just use call that the bottom. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna call that the bottom. I'm gonna sand it up. I'm gonna finish it out. I'm gonna reset the bit. Finish it out. Um, so I'll just have two trenches that are about an eighth of an inch too deep. Fuck it. <laughs> I mean, whatever. I'll take the sandy sand, and we're gonna go outside. <clears throat> We're gonna do some sandy sand. That's the door. I'm out of it. Bluebird. I had to do an absorbent amount of hand sanding on this first slab because unfortunately I was stubborn and fought Caitlin on the matter of getting a belt sander. More on that matter here in a moment. This is just silly. I don't know why I didn't pick up that belt sander yesterday. What was I thinking? I mean, honestly, Caitlin said, hey, we should get it now. And I was like, nah, we didn't, that's not what we came in here for. Let's not pick up this belt sander. We can get it some other time. And she's like, but Brandon, like, we're gonna need it. And I was like, yeah, but like, no. That was all I had. I could really use it right now. Ash is not soft. I'm using my makeshift router sled here to remove any inconsistencies in the thickness of this slab. Now that the slab is flat, I will take my electric hand planer to remove a consistent thickness along the whole length and width of the slab. Once that is complete, we'll take the electric belt sander that Caitlin so brilliantly suggested is necessary and we'll walk from a low grit to a high grit until we achieve a nice, smooth, consistent surface. You'll notice I'm working on gravel. Working on gravel means there are a lot of variables that you have to account for, i.e. a level surface is difficult to achieve. So constant mind needs to be made to assure you have a nice level work surface, especially while using a router sled. You'll notice in order to achieve a level surface, I placed bits of wood and other materials underneath the legs of my sawhorses. While this wasn't entirely reliable, it's what I had to do in order to get the job done. After hours of blood, sweat, and tears, days and months, years even, allowing these slabs to dry, it is now time to put them together. You'll see here I'm using pegs and pre-drilled holes, and I'll just slide these together and beat the shit out of them with this hammer.
as I beat the snot out of these two slabs with this dead blow hammer, I'm listening for a distinct tone change that tells me that the two sections are properly joined together. Here I'm making efforts to design a space so that I can fit all of my tools underneath of my workbench. This is proving to be somewhat of a task, and I go through several iterations before landing on a final design. But doesn't that look great in the setting? I love it. I put a lot of work into this, and I'm ecstatic that you can see the final product. Well, I suppose it's not the final product, but... You'll see that in the walkthrough. <laughs> I can only give you so much at one time. Enjoy yourselves, guys. Thanks for coming along. I had a great time. See you next time.